What's up, everybody? Isaac here, Civil Engineering Academy. Excited to be with you on another podcast episode. Thanks for checking us out. Give us a five-star review if you can, and a like and a subscribe, maybe, or check out uh, sharing this with your friends. We enjoy that, and uh, hopefully, as you enjoy these episodes, hopefully others are too. Anyway, we're thankful that you're here. Thanks for checking us out. I'm excited today because I bring on a past guest onto the show, Hannah Copeman. In our previous episode with her, we chatted about studying and preparing for the FE exam. She was preparing for that at the time, and we talked about building a sustainable future. She is a structural engineer um, and working as a structural engineer. And fast forward to today, she has now passed her PE exam. I wanted to bring her on and talk about her PE exam experience and get an update on her life and what's going on. So we are excited to bring Hannah back on. She has great tips about taking her PE exam with an emphasis on structural as her depth exam. You're not going to want to miss this if you are taking your PE exam. I enjoyed the interview, and I think you're going to enjoy listening to Hannah and the tips that she has. So with that introduction, let's get right to it right after this. Hey, I wanted to jump on real quick and let you know about a free resource we developed for you. You can find it at civilengineeringacademy.com slash PE guide, and this will help you to jumpstart your studies for your PE exam. So if you're in the hunt and you're just thinking about the PE exam, this guide will help you get through the process of figuring out everything you need to do from the PE exams prerequisites that you got to figure out, the must-have materials that you're going to need for the exam, any approved calculators, what groups you should join, exam secrets, and much more. Um, it's all in this guide that we've got developed for you. It's completely free. You can go check it out at civilengineeringacademy.com slash PE guide. Just put in your email. We'll get you that information as soon as the email comes to your inbox. So go check it out, Civil Engineering Academy dot com slash PE guide. All right, we are running and going. Hannah, thank you for jumping on the Civil Engineering Academy podcast. Appreciate you doing this again with us. Again, round two. <laughs> round two. So this one's going to be fun because last time we chatted, uh, it was before kind of your whole exam experience and everything along with that. So it's kind of fun to see maybe the before and after, but I guess before we do that, why don't you, if you could, describe where you're at right now, wh why you chose civil engineering, what you're, what you're doing for work. Sure. So right now I'm working at a structural engineering firm in San Francisco, and I've only been working there for about two and a half years now. Uh, first major job out of school, but I kind of got into civil engineering um, when I was younger, I've always had a passion for architecture and math. So some mentors kind of guided me towards civil. And then in university, structural really stuck out. So I pursued a few internships from there, really enjoyed it. And that kind of brings me to a structural engineering firm today. Awesome. So why don't you give our audience or me kind of a heads up as to where you were last time we chatted and like what's changed today? Yeah, quite a bit. <laughs> I think last time we chatted, I was just studying for the FE, so didn't even have my sights on the PE yet. Um, pretty sure it was still deeper in the pandemic, so I was back living in New York with my family, and yeah, the future did not seem as bright, but I'm happy <laughs> to be on the other side of it. Oh, awesome. Push through. Well, um, as we're talking about studying, because we want to talk about the PE, uh, you've been able to, to ace that now. Uh, you've, you're working professionally. How uh, were you able to manage or balance or find time to study? How did you do time management with your studies? Yeah, I feel that everyone says make a plan, but I can testify that is definitely the path to go down, you know, setting a path kind of laying out a few months and getting as detailed as you want. You know, you could even break down this week. You know, I plan to top it to tackle this topic or X, Y, Z. Um, so I kind of gave myself five months and chose to do about an hour or two of studying after work each week and then hit maybe a five hour session on Saturday or Sunday, but just kind of made the schedule manageable, you know, accounting for life to happen as it will, knowing that some weekends I might not be able to study. So I think just 
setting schedule, accounting for things to happen was really the main thing. And we briefly talked about this a little bit, but were you able to study at work and how did you manage that or handle that with either coworkers or your manager? I did not study at work. Uh, personally, I just kind of wanted the separation and um, maybe to really get in the zone and studying and not cross over work. But it was an option. I know other coworkers at my firm did do that. So I was really sticking to either before work or after work, maybe some flashcards during lunch closer to, but not so much during work. Awesome. Well, let's uh, go through your exam journey a little bit. So you were able to pass your FE exam. Uh, it sounds like you gave yourself five months to prepare for your PE exam. Um, when did you take your your PE exam? I took it at the end of June. The so end of June. Not too long ago. And is uh, so you started preparing five months prior to that. Yeah, so I think around January, February, I started to get into it. Did you feel like that was enough time, or do you feel like um, people, I mean, what's your? what would be your advice for people trying to figure out how much time should I prepare for this? I felt it was enough time. Um, I think you kind of want to stay within the bounds of not giving yourself too much time. You know, if you study something in the beginning, you kind of want to make sure everything's fresh. But I feel like timing is also dependent on, you know, did you take the FE recently? Are you fresher on the material? You know, are you 10 years out of school? Kind of those things. But I would say five to six months seems like a generous and realistic ballpark. Well, that definitely makes sense. Um, we always preach in our course and on our material, material kind of the same thing. Um, I always teach, you know, a three-month minimum when people start creeping up to that. Either you're a genius or something. <laughs> we should never be a... For sure. <laughs> that was more time there. So um, what do you think was harder, the FE or the PE exam? So we were chatting about this before, and I do think the FE might have been a little more challenging just because of the higher, per se, barrier to entry with getting into what the NCES testing and CBT format is like and just kind of wrapping your head around strategy because they're kind of similar between both. But I would say content and depth is certainly more challenging on the PE. Definitely. Yeah, I have uh, I think we did a YouTube video once and I mentioned that the FE exam was harder than the PE exam. And again, that's also relative. You know, if you've been out of school for a while, the FE is going to be a huge challenge to remember all the math that's thrown at you and everything else. And, and the same thing goes with your PE exam. But um, yeah, the depth of material in the PE exam is definitely uh, more related, I would say, to your career, kind of what you're going into. And maybe that doesn't come out in the FE right now. So um, yeah, that's fair. Well, how did you um discover civil engineering academy again why was that uh where you went to for help so i first discovered civil engineering academy when i was getting into the fe studying i was just looking around for resources i love podcasts so i was seeing if maybe there were some out there that people were sharing experiences and lo and behold i landed on yours um nice. so yeah that kind of brought me there and then when it came time to study for the pe I was kind of on the fence about doing a course or not, but mm -hmm. was reading a lot of reviews and, you know, testimonials online and kind of found that the Civil Engineering Academy seemed maybe the most digestible, you know, cost effective. And then the Facebook community really reached out to me as something that would be very helpful during studying habits. That's awesome. Um, I wanted to, I guess touch upon that a little bit more what was your mindset as to preparing yourself versus even looking into a course preparing myself um i would say maybe getting ready to say no to some social activities or just extra things going on in life i think one of my coworkers told me in the beginning like you're just gonna have to put the time in there's kind of no way around it so thank you preparing myself that way and then 
other ways for maybe gathering all the materials, you know, make sure my space was ready to go. Just kind of setting up everything around so that once I was ready to jump in, it was a smooth transition. That makes sense. Well, awesome. What was your, I guess, favorite feature of the course that we offer? I do like the organized lessons. I feel like that was a great way to jump in and kind of kickstart studying. Um, I also like the feature where it shows you your progress going along because it's very nice to see, you know, the bar moving. Maybe if you don't feel like it inside, you can, you can tangibly see that you're getting somewhere. So that was good. Um, and the Facebook group for sure. I think the community is awesome. It's really helpful to have people who are in the same boat, people who, you know, just cross the finish line and then you and your team there to answer any questions. It really kind of just keeps the nerves down. For sure. I think most people have talked, I mean, when they talk about our course, they mention the help that they get. And just finding people that are in the same boat as you is very helpful and um, and and responsiveness, you know, being able to be there to answer questions quickly or have people chime in uh, is is extremely important. And, and hopefully that that's uh, very helpful for you and for others. So uh, I'm glad you like that one. Um what do you think is the hardest part about the exam? I think probably the time management. I think it can be easy to get stuck on a question and really let your wheels spin and kind of waste time. So my method for that was try to go through the questions on the first pass where if I knew how to do it, let's just hit it, go through. And if there was a question that maybe I didn't know on the first minute or two, I would flag that one and come back to it. I felt that it was kind of important to keep the momentum and my confidence high going through the exam and then maybe once my nerves settled, okay, now I can go back to those questions that might take me 10 minutes or so. But kind of knowing that, all right, I got some under my belt. Now, now I can waste some more time on these longer ones. Makes sense. Was there anything during the exam that when you were taking it, you were just like, oh my gosh, why are they, this is so frustrating. Was there any frustrating moments? There were two questions that I had absolutely no idea what the answer was. Um, but I knew that it was just a question where I had to dig through the code. So those were two examples where I flagged those ones, came back to it at the end, and I don't know if people are aware, but the sections in the CBT are based on chapters when you go inside the searchable codes. So I would, you know, go in through a chapter, oh, it's not there, choose another chapter, but that one felt like they were just sending me on a scavenger hunt a little bit. Ooh, so you cannot control F the whole thing. You have to go to a chapter and then you can search the chapter. Exactly, yeah. So you kind of need a vague idea of what section it might be in. Um, you could also probably go to the glossary you, and see pages. You think they did that on purpose. They probably. I don't know. <laughs> they want you to at least know the code a little bit. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Was there anything that you felt really prepared for, either you know, through your own preparation or through the course and how it prepared you? When you took the exam, you felt like um, you were confident. I would say the breath questions I felt pretty confident on, and that's really what your course drilled home, um, just the repetitiveness and knowing that those can be a bit easier than the depth questions. So I focused heavily on those towards the end, and that really helped and kind of brought my confidence up. And I think I read in one of your newsletters that it said, if you get something like 30 out of 40 of the breath questions correct, then you only need about 65% of your death questions. So I would stress the importance of getting those breath questions correct. <laughs> uh, it's, I don't know, I don't know if anybody talks about this, but we, we harp on it all the time. Um, and that is, you know, the big secret to crushing this exam, we feel, is to crush those AM questions because they are just so much easier uh, than the afternoon ones. And people are always blown away, I think, a little bit by the difficulty of the PM questions or, or they don't feel prepared for them or they throw things that are out of left field. And, um, you know, it, it might be hard to truly prepare somebody for every question they could ever ask. So 
if you can really crush those morning questions, um, you've given yourself, we feel like, the, the best possible chance to definitely nail this thing. So good tip. Um, what about your depth exam? Why don't you describe uh, the depth exam you took and what advice you would have for someone taking the same, same exam? So I took the structural depth, and that's the field I worked in, so definitely felt the most approach approachable out of all of them. <laughs> and for that one, I didn't do a course. I kind of looked through some of the questions ahead of time while I was studying and thought that I could probably just get through these, maybe a little extra research, but mostly I thought I had a pretty good idea. But for that, it was definitely key to get all the resources, which are the PDFs of the codes, the manuals, have that ready to go. Because in the test setting, that's how you're presented with them. So I feel like if you can just really get a good grasp on how to navigate, you know, what your intuition tells you about which sections to jump to, just being really aware of what you're given on the exam and then practice questions in abundance and working with the code. So you're just kind of treating it like the exam. Great advice. Were you surprised on the exam with the amount of theory there was on there? There was a lot of theory, <laughs> but I feel like the Facebook group did chat about that quite a bit, so I was anticipating the theory. Um, and with those, I would say practice tests really just give you great exposure to the type of questions they might ask, and for structural specifically, you can probably bet that you'll get a question on you know where to place reinforcement and footing, retaining wall, or something on shear and bending diagrams, but. Beyond that, I probably wouldn't stress on the specific ones too much because they really can't ask you anything. Yeah. So maybe just so yeah. you can get down to two answers, you know. That's a great, uh, great advice. Yeah, we try to prepare people. We give some bonus theory questions. The po point of that in the course is kind of just to open your mind a little bit to what can be thrown at you. Um, but it is, it is hard. Uh, to prepare for that just because, you know, they could virtually throw anything at you. And back in the day when it was open book, you know, you could bring a textbook or something and kind of thumb through that. But now that things are um, the CBT, it makes it a little more challenging because you're not going to find an answer, um, you know, in the handbook necessarily. So you're going to have to use your best engineering judgment on that stuff and and uh, do lots of problems to, to figure that out. So so speaking of problems, um, how many practice exams did you take? And how did you, we offer in the course a uh, simulator. How did that work out for you and thoughts around that? Yeah, I think I ended up doing four practice exams. I did the simulator, the NCES published one, and then two other ones that I've Kind of found online through other resources but i would say that's super important just to get your timing down and understand you know at what point during the exam you're going to hit a lull and kind of where your mindset's going to be in that last half but the cbt was their simulator from your course was super awesome because it really showed you the flagging that you can do on the exam the chunky format of the exam and just kind of getting used to it and you know seeing the sidebar where you have your references so just as putting as much in front of you as possible so you're not surprised day of is a big help do you have any advice or tips for people that take practice exams uh, sometimes questions i get or hey i scored a 60 or a 65 percent on a practice exam do you do you think i'm ready for the for the real exam I mean, would you have any tips or advice for what people should should be shooting for on an exam, practice exam? I think the 70 mark is probably realistic. I've kind of read different things on that. People saying, you know, score between 80s and 90s and you're set. But sometimes that's hard. And depending on the practice exams you get, they can be at different levels of difficulty. But I think the 70... 70% mark is fair. 
And if you can kind of fit that consistently in your practice exams, there's no reason you shouldn't be ready. Good advice. What, um, what other tips would you have for someone preparing for this exam? I think to keep your mind and body taken care of as well. I feel like it can be easy to just jump into study mode and think that every free second you have, you should be studying. And I've definitely fallen victim to that before too, but I did try this time around to, you know, exercise, practice mindfulness, you know, think about what I'm eating. I feel like taking time away from studying to focus on those other parts definitely made me a bit more productive when I didn't sit down and try to get a three or four hour session out of the way. Yeah, that's true. Would you have any tips around, um, I know you took the exam just one time, right? One and done. Yes. It was awesome. What advice would you give for someone that maybe didn't get a passing result and is seeing that they're struggling? What what tips would you have for them? I think don't let it affect you too much at the end of the day. The test doesn't really dictate who you are as a person and also doesn't really show a great portray of your intelligence too. I think it's one thing to be in a timed exam where there's high pressure first where you're at your desk you have all your resources around you where your tabs are laid out so it's not indicative all the time and there is a community out there just search for civil engineering academy and you'll find people who are on you know seven eight times in passing and it's pretty awesome when you see them get through it is very awesome. We've had people in our course uh, seven, eight times able to get over the hump and uh, others even in their 60s that just want to get this thing done. And, you know, it's been a, a goal of theirs. And they, I don't know, for whatever reason, maybe career paths just didn't align, but now they're in their 60s and they want to do it. So um, that's impressive. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I, would, if I would have the energy to do it that. I wouldn't either, but. <laughs> You know, good for them. I think that's cool. Well, what's next for, for Hannah? What's what's on the radar? Are you going to get your California, uh, you got you have to take the California exams? Are you going to get your SC? What's, what's on the radar next? Definitely California exams. I'm kind of working through my application right now. And then I think once that comes back, you have, the next quarter of the year to jump into those exams. So seismic and surveying, those will those will be coming up for me soon. Coming up. That's gonna be fun. And SE, is that no, yes, maybe? I'm I'm unsure at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I might answer that in a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a breath from exams for a little while. Yeah. <laughs> um this, I mean, the SE is a difficult exam. My brother has his SE. Um, I know workplaces that will pay big bonuses for you to get your SE because it's, you know, it is a, uh, a value, definitely a value add to have that. But anyway, well, Anna, this has been awesome. Is there anything about the course you'd want to share with others that are thinking or maybe you're on the fence about it? Yeah, I would just say if you can swing it or if you're, company can help you pay for it then it really just saves you a lot of time and a lot of stress looking into other resources and what to do where to study so i would definitely recommend it to anyone who is on the fence awesome well we love it definitely share it with your friends if you're interested go check it out you can find it at civilengineeringacademy.com or if you want to go straight to our other site with the course it's a civil pe review course.com You'll find all the goodies there, the lectures. Um, we have tons of video practice problems, exams, all the good stuff. So check that out. And Hannah, if anyone had questions for you about the exam or otherwise, how can they reach out to you? You can find me on LinkedIn. Perfect. We'll, we'll go ahead and leave that in the show notes. So they'll reach out Perfect. to you. Perfect. Well, Anna, thank you for doing this. I appreciate you jumping on, giving us an update as to where things are. And we're so excited that you passed your PE exam. Congratulations on doing that. And I'm sure you're still celebrating. <laughs> thank you, Isaac. Yeah, it's always great to hop on. Okay. We'll talk to you later. Bye. All right. Bye.